what if he meant it? And what if we missed it? What if his plans for prayer was much more than a wish list? You children of the king, hun, fluent in the king's tongue. Homie, watch the change when comes thy kingdom and carry his agenda like return to sender. When they ask where you be at, be like about my father's business. Source of power plugged in, connected to the mainframe. Power to raise there, the life is coursing through your veins and maintain the aim of a life that is shaped and molded. Constant communication with his owner and walk around town like the solid rock you stand on's made for the same solid rock you place your faith in. Y'all know y'all can speak like God wrote the whole dialogue and ye in fear suffering cause you knew his whole catalog. Words the new boldest like how the great can't hold us. You will lead you to soldiers. Just pray like I told you. Come on. Amen. Let's say Jesus. Jesus. What's happening Rock Church? How you doing today? We are jacked up over here. Let's all get on our knees. And while you get on our knees, I want to say hello to San Isidro, North County, East County, microsites. My people's in Coronado. What's happening, everybody? Everybody around the world, let's give all the people in the military a big hand. Everybody watching online, God bless you. Take 30 seconds, ask the person next to you two questions. Were they on time? And did they pray 15 minutes a day this week? How many got to know? Mm -hmm. On time, baby. Let's go. Let's pray. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you. I pray we could be on time. You are never late. Neither should we be. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your love. And we pray that you teach us today to pray, but also that we would volunteer in the ministry. May we serve our city, our county, our community, our world. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. Let's see your Bible. Say word. word. One more time, Rock Church. Say word. word. Uh, very quickly, turn to uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. If you go to a foreign country, and, and actually every country has this, but a foreign country as far as being an American citizen, we have uh, embassies in foreign countries. And in the embassy is the, uh, works the, uh, the ambassador, works through the embassy. The ambassador represents our country. And the ambassador has at his disposal, her disposal, uh, authority and power of the United States or whatever country they represent. They often speak on behalf of the president, the king, or whatever the leader is called, the prime minister in that country. In the kingdom of God, God is the king. And we are his citizens, we are his ambassadors. You and I represent God. You're not someone who goes to church, you are representative to the world of what God looks like, what he's supposed to talk like, love like, what his government looks like, what obeying him looks like. And the question you have to ask yourself is how good of a job are you doing at that? Coming to church every other week, coming to church whenever you come, however you come, come late, on time, without a Bible, with a Bible, whatever, that's a very, very small part of being an ambassador. Most of it, 90% of it, well, you just take an hour, one hour out of 24 times seven hours of the week that you're here. All the rest of the time, you've got to be an ambassador. And one of the ways to do that is to serve him in some form of ministry. And I don't mean full time, just somehow that he's using the gifts he's given you to serve the community. We have 197, as Tommy said, 197 ministries in all our campuses. We have booths in all our campuses today, all over San Diego, and opportunities for you to serve. Now, I'm not saying you have to serve in one of those. God can put something else on your heart. Absolutely. But we're making it available to you. And if you don't have, if there's not a ministry there, and there's a list in your bulletin, by the way, if you want to look through it, if there's not one there for you, we have opportunity for you to start your own if you are, in, in, in fact, someone God has called to start one or be part of one. So you can go in the lobby uh, uh, of, the, of the campuses and you can start your own. Uh, but I want to encourage you today to be thinking about, God, how are you going to use me? Okay? And it's very important that when you go, you sign up 
that we're not asking you to sign up. We're asking you to show up. Because some people go and sign up for 10 ministries and show up for none of them, and they put all those people through a headache. We want you to show up. Okay, that means go to a meeting. And when you sign up today, within an hour, you're going to get information from us. Uh, and especially here in Point Loma, we have a text system that, that we're going to eventually get out to all the campuses. And, yet, and within two weeks, there's going to be a meeting of that ministry. And they're going to invite you to the meeting, so we want you to go. Okay? So let's, let's read this real quick, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. It says, uh, verse 20. We'll just go straight to verse 20. <laughs> God is good. <laughs> it says, verse 20. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Everyone say ambassadors. We are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. As though God were pleading. You ever wonder why I yell every week? Every week I come up here, I go, okay, don't, don't yell. I get so excited. God is pleading. And God is saying, trust me, not me, him. He said, trust me. And so I, I want to encourage you, you are an ambassador. Let God use you to represent him in the kingdom in one of 197 ways of, that we're expressing here at the church, at least through the volunteer ministries in the community or some other way, be an ambassador. So what we're going to do today, because I've been challenged you every week to pray, 15 minutes, amen? How many of you have heard that challenge? Raise your hand if you've heard me ask that challenge. How many of you have not heard me ask that challenge? Okay, very few because you've been here. I've been doing it every week. I've been challenging you every single day, every week, to pray every day 15 minutes. That's it. You have 15 minutes. I know you do. You have 15 minutes. So the only reason you're not doing it is because you're not making it a priority, but I know you have it. Okay? So what we're going to do today is we're going to pray. And we're going to teach you one way you could use that 15 minutes. Okay? So take out your lesson plan. And turn to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, the Lord's Prayer. We are going to pray through the Lord's Prayer in six different little sections. And they're going to be so simple, you're going to go, I could do that. <laughs> I have a cousin named Chris, and he had a real voice like that when he was a kid, and he wanted to play football. He would go, I want to play football. I want to play football. <laughs> so I want you to say, I want to pray. <laughs> That's in honor of my cousin Chris. I want to pray. I, I have, my grandson's four, month, four months old, and uh, he's just starting to talk. And <laughs> so I always imitate him to my wife that he's like, Grandpa, Grandpa, oh, my, 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 Grandpa. That's all I'm waiting for him to say that. <clears throat> anyway, he's not learning how to talk. Y'all like, is he really, he's really advanced if he's talking at four months. He's not talking. He's, he's just walking, but he'll start talking probably next month. <laughs> we, got him, we got him a bicycle last week. <laughs> he's taking piano lessons. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to pray through an acronym, or SIPA. Everybody say or SIPA. Say A. a. Say w. w. Say C. C. Say I. I. Say P. P. Say A. The two A's mean the same thing. Each letter means one word or one theme. And what we're going to do is we're going to pray one theme at a time. This is going to help you more than God. God can, God can keep track if you're going all over the place. We can't. So we're going to pray one theme at a time. This is a guide, not a formula. Everyone say guide. Guide means just kind of try it that direction. Formula means you have to do this, this, and this happens. It's not a formula. There's an unlimited amount of ways to pray. Prayer is communication to God. Okay? So this is one way. Okay? It's a guide. And by the way, communication, more, most of your communication is nonverbal. More than half of your communication is nonverbal. What you wear today communicates something. Okay? See this shirt right here? Uh, this communicates something. Blam! <laughs> okay, so it communicates, okay? Coming late to church communicates. It's not that important. 
Now, I know stuff happens every now and then, but some people are always late. That means it's not important for you to be on time, to you. Worship, and I can miss it. Not bring your Bible, communicate something. I'll just listen. It communicates possibly that you think you're so smart, you don't need to read it. Okay? It communicates. Having, not having a pen to write down what God might say to you communicates. It's probably not going to be that important. Okay? So we communicate stuff with our actions a whole lot. Okay? When we get on our knees, this communicates something. Okay? When you pray like this, uh, that communicates. Okay, so we're going to pray. We want to communicate to God. And by the way, you always want to have, be prepared for God to speak to you. So as we're praying today, I want you to be prepared for God to speak to you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, A. Look what it says in chapter 6, verse 9. It says, in this manner, therefore pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. For every one of these points, we're going to do a series, by the way. This is probably going to take six months. Hallowed be thy name means cause your name to be holy. Our Father in heaven. Where's our Father? Right. He ain't hanging here. I'm not saying God is here, but God is enthroned in heaven. We need to always remind ourselves of that, that we're not talking to one of our homeboys. We're talking to a holy God that there is none like him on the earth. That's why we do this. Now, you don't always have to physically do this, but in your heart you want to be doing this. Okay? And we're going to say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So the A, look in your notes, the A is that we are going to admire, praise, appreciate God. We're going to give honor to the king of the kingdom. So here's very, a very simple idea. Lord, I praise you for What? <laughs> what? I, <laughs> I thank you for what? The first A is that we're just going to spend a minute or so just thanking God. That's it. Don't ask for anything. Don't confess anything. Don't pray for anybody else. This is all about you acknowledging that God is holy, that God is faithful, that God is powerful, that God is awesome, that God is glorious. That's all you're going to do. You're going to establish that God is on his throne in heaven and you are not. Can I get amen? amen? Bow your heads and let's pray. And by the way, here's what I want you to do. I want you to try something. I want you to try to pray out loud. We did it last time. People, it's okay. You don't have to. But I want you to try to pray out loud. I want you to hear what you have to say. Don't worry about anybody else. Pray out loud to God. If you want to shout to God, whatever. I want you to express it. When we talked about that two weeks ago, Jesus prayed with cries to God. Let's just one minute. Praise God, thank God, acknowledge how good he is to you. Thank him for your teeth, your hair, your bald head, whatever you have. Just thank him. Let's bow our heads and pray. Oh, it's quiet. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Lord, thank you for being who you are, and thank you that you are the one and only true God. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, next verse, it says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let me read again. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Uh, the first thing you do is you establish that God is in heaven and you are not. And then you say, Lord, the W is may your will be done. Every prayer you ever pray, foundation is that you are praying to a God who can do things you cannot do, and you are asking that God to do something on earth that is, is consistent with what's in heaven. You are asking that God to express his will on earth, not your will. 
You can express, God, I would like this, I would like this, but in the end, may your will be done. Lord, I want to date that person, but in the end, your will be done. Because I don't want to date that person if you don't want me to. I don't want to buy the house if you don't want me to. I don't want that job if you don't want it for me. I only want what you want. And by the way, God, I'm asking you to do something that I can't do. I'm asking you to do something that isn't, doesn't exist now. I'm not praying for something I already have. I'm praying for something I don't have. And so prayer is all about getting, having something happen that's not happening. Okay, Lord, we ask that your will will be done in our health, in our relationships, your will will be done. It's all about you. Jesus, right before he was arrested to be crucified, he said, Lord, Father, is there any other way salvation man can be saved? Is there any other way? Do I have to be crucified? Do I have to be beat, arrested? And then he said, but not my will, thy will. This is all about him. Look what it says in your notes. Pray to know the kingdom of God agenda. And then it says, Lord, may thy will be done in what? My relationships, my career, my health. Whatever is on your heart, whatever burden you have, needs you have, I want God to answer this prayer. Pray it, but tell, ask God that his will, his kingdom standard would be realized in your life. Let's pray. Lord, may your will be done in our church. May the people you want to serve, serve where you want them to serve. May your will be done in our prayer life. May your will be done in our giving as our tithes and offerings are being low. May your will be done that you prompt people to give. May your will be done in people to share their faith. May your will be done in our physical bodies. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. C. Everyone say C. C. Communion with God. Look what it says. It says, give, verse 11, give us this day our daily bread. Now, you can say, well, aren't we supposed to pray for our food that God feeds us every day? Yes, God is going to uh, take care of you. He's going to roof over your head. He's going to take care of your food. You trust him. Jesus said, my food is not bread. My food is to do the will of the Father. May God give you spiritual manna for your soul. May you be spiritually filled up. May you walk in the presence of God every day. May you be spiritually ready in season, out of season, for God to use you at any moment to minister to somebody else. God, I want to walk with you. I want to sense your presence in my life. I want to be led by the Spirit. May your daily bread be feeding me every day on a spiritual level. I don't need to eat food today, but I need God. And unfortunately, we get up saying, I got to have my coffee. But we don't get up saying, I got to have my God. I got to have my, my jolt. You are addicted to caffeine. Straight up. You know it. Well, if you don't know it, stop drinking and find yourself doing like this under the table. That's called an addiction. Lord, I want to I wanna, I wanna, I wanna have you as my daily food every day. So I want you to pray for a minute, Lord, fill me with your presence. Bow our heads. Ask God to fill you spiritually right now.
Lord, I pray you make your presence known. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, we're going to do a whole series on all these letters. And my prayer is when we get to that letter, before we even get there, you will come to know God's presence and be able to feel it, sense it, engage it, be impacted by it, share it. Oh. I intercede, pray for other people, and forgive us our debts in the same way we forgive our debtors. Imagine if God forgave you in the same way you forgave other people. Ooh. I'm going to say it again slow, then I'm going to pause for emphasis. Imagine if God forgave you in the same way you forgave others. Imagine if God held grudges against you in the same way you hold grudges against others. Imagine if God gossiped behind your back in the same way you gossip about other people's back. Imagine if God was as critical of you as you were critical of others. Ooh, shut your mouth. <laughs> Lord, forgive me as I forgive others. So therefore, Lord, I am going to do a really good job of forgiving everybody in my life right now. How many of you got somebody you need to forgive? Mm -hmm. Let's try that one more time. We try to be an equal opportunity church and an all-inclusive uh, 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 participating church. How many of you got someone you need to forgive? Yeah, uh-huh. When you forgive them, I want you to include forgiving yourself for not being forgiving of them. And I want you to forgive yourself for judging them based on little information and not knowing the whole story because you don't know the whole story. Just say, God, I'm sorry. And I'm so glad you forgave me for stuff I didn't even ask for forgiveness for. Let it go. You are carrying a burden that's going to bury you. You're going to get physically sick, stressed out. So let it go. Here, look what it says. It says, pray to have a kingdom of God relationship. God, cleanse my heart of blank. Woo. Bitterness, anger. Look what it says. Lord, please cleanse my heart of bitterness, anger, jealousy, whatever you want to put in the blank. Towards who? Say their name out loud. Lord, you know I can't stand that girl. What's her name? <laughs> Say her name. <laughs> Saquanda, God, Saquanda. <laughs> All right, I said it. <laughs> I love Shaquanda. <laughs> Lord, please. Please draw Shaquanda close to you. Shaquanda. Pray for Shaquanda. Pray. Pray. Don't look at me. Pray. <laughs> Are you praying? <laughs> Lord, I pray you release burdens of people that they've been holding grudges. I pray you set them free from the lies in their head and that you would overwhelm their heart with love for everybody they know. In Jesus' name, amen. I have a friend of mine, um, her name is Gail, and she loves to eat. Eating was like an event. And my wife and I would go out, her and her husband, and she would get food, and she would, oh, no, that's just not what I had in mind. They're going to take it back. <laughs> we were so, like, so embarrassing. But then when she would get the food that she loved, like the, it was prepared the way she wanted, she would say, I love everybody I know right now. <laughs> you need to get to where you love everybody you know. The P, petition. Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. 
You cannot be delivered from the strong man unless a stronger man comes and sets you free. <laughs> the strong man being the devil, the stronger man being God. You need the power of God. And some of you are gripped in sin, pride, pornography, addiction, jealousy, anger, all this stuff, and you're, and you're enslaved to it because God has not set you free. <laughs> or you're, you've been set free. You haven't appropriated that freedom. You don't know it. Lord, fill me with your power. Give it, let me exercise that power. By the way, God has not only given you power, he's given you authority to exercise the power and to access the power. Lord, I want that power. Not for me, for your glory. It's all about him. Amen? So what we're going to do in a minute, we're going to pray for power, and then I'm going to pray for people to be healed. This is how it's going to go. I'm going to pray something like this. If you are, have a, a, a sickness or something's wrong with your leg, your body, you have cancer, whatever, in Jesus' name, may you be healed. That's all I'm going to say, something simple like that. And if you get healed, we're going to ask you if you feel like, oh, my leg feels better, my knee feels better, whatever. We're just going to ask you to raise your hand. Last service, we had seven people in East County, two people in here raised their hand, uh, a few people in North County. Just say, you just feel it. Wow, it went away. It, it happens like that. Why? Because it's his power. His power. And when we get to this, you're going to learn how to say the same thing. Dear Lord, pray you heal him. It's really that simple. Why you have to wait five months to say that? I don't know. You could do it today. And you never know what God might do. So first, I want you to pray that God's power would empower you to, what, be set free from some temptation? Empower you to say the right thing, do the right thing? Lord, set me free from the bondage I'm in that I can be empowered to do what you want me to do. Amen? Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you that you have given us power. When the Holy Spirit comes on us, we shall receive power that we may be your witnesses. Acts 1.8 tells us that the Holy Spirit will come upon us and give us power from heaven. Not for our purposes, not for our glory or credit. It's all the glory and credit and honor goes to the Lord Jesus. And Lord, right now, we ask for your power. There are people in our campuses who have illnesses. They have migraine headaches. They live in fear. They have leg problems, foot problems, ankle problems. We pray right now that you would heal them. Lord, only you can do it. You are the great physician, not a practicing physician. You have all authority in heaven and earth. And in, and in the name of Jesus Christ, we ask for healing. We ask for healing of relationships. We ask for healing of depression and fear and anxiety and cancer and muscle problems and ankle problems and sprains and breaks and all the things that you can do. We ask that. And as our eyes are closed and our heads are bowed, if you have a, a pain or something that you know that you can test right now to see if it went away, eyes closed, heads bowed, if you feel like God healed you in any form, just raise your hand up real high and we can see you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Keep your hand up high. God bless you. Very good. Anybody else? God bless you. God bless you. Very good. God bless you. God bless you. Very good. Thank you. Lord, thank you. And Lord, I pray for the people who are saying that it really didn't happen. I pray they wouldn't doubt you. <laughs> Because you don't need to have thunder and lightning for someone to be healed. It's just a, a thought of, from your heart. You can just do it as simple as that. And I pray we would exercise the power you have made available to us to overcome the works of the devil in our life and give you all the glory and honor because it's all about you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give those people a hand. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Amen. Amen. Someone... Very, very, very quickly, we only have two minutes. I got to get you out of here. Someone who raised their hand, tell us what happened. What did you feel? Yes. I have carpal tunnel in both of my hands. Can it feel better? The, the carpal tunnel is gone. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. How about you? <laughs> Migraine headache, gone. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And, and, 
We got one more, uh, and if, you, if you're in the campuses, we want you to tell the campus pastors there or someone there what happened to you, okay? Why it's important for you to know what happened is I didn't, I didn't plant these people here. Did I plant you there? Do I know you? Do I, do I plant you there? Okay, because uh, I don't hate put them there and he asked them to say that. <laughs> we get the emails, okay? Uh, it's for, <laughs> for you to believe, that's it, that's it, that's it. I, I have seen thousands of, Hundreds of thousands of people saved, and it's never thunder and lightning. They just go, Jesus, Jesus, forgive me. And boom, their sin is gone. You, if that is that easy, why can't carpal tunnel or headache be gone? It's really that simple. One more. we got to get out of here real quick. A- adoration. We start. We're going to end where we started. A, let's pray and thank God for something today. 30 seconds. Pastor Tommy, we need you to come out. Yeah, very good. Let's bow our heads and pray. A. And by the way, all the campuses, when we come out of this prayer, your campus pastor will be on stage, and he will close out your service. Lord, thank you. Lord, I pray everybody goes home and takes this piece of paper and uses it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Was that easy? Go do it. Pastor Tommy? <laughs> amen, amen. A couple things real quick because we want you to have time to go out and meet and greet with all the different ministry leaders.